Hello and good evening. I welcome you to today's special webinar here uh, on the topic behavioral finance, how to use it in your trading exclusively for JFT brokers. So my name is Jens Klatt um, and I'm uh, presenting this topic to you exclusively for JFT brokers. Um, so we want to start with, uh, as usual, the risk disclaimer since trading foreign exchange and see if these on margin carries a high level of risk and uh, the discussed products um may not be suitable for oral investors and that you please ensure that you fully understand uh, understand the risks involved and um then we'll start with the first slide i've prepared a little um uh a little uh presentation on this topic by the way it's one of my absolute favorite topics in trading um some of you may know even though this is um an english uh, english speaking event here um, that I'm uh, usually a native German speaker, uh, respectively uh, located in Germany, and um, that I'm also author on a book. It's uh, called Forex Trading. Um, so in the English-speaking trading world, usually you have plenty of um, books out there on uh, on FX trading in Germany. Uh, not so much. So there are um, not so many books out there on uh, fixed trading. And in 2014, um, no, I'm sorry, 2013, was at the end of 2013, I was um, asked by one of the biggest uh, big book publishers here in Germany if I'm interested in uh, presenting something on this topic since I made myself known as someone who knows um, quite a bit on this on this topic and uh, that they were looking for someone who would uh, write a book on FX trading. And um, so what I did was I made uh, behavioral finance a big topic in this in this book and the sentiment and how to use it. And the main question here, and you can already read it, um, the most exciting question on this topic here on behavioral finance um, and also on FX trading in general, since FX trading is a uh, um, mainly decentralized market and um, you do not have a stock exchange um, as uh, as you have, for example, in, uh, um, in, in, in stock trading or uh, when trading futures. And so you do not have the underlying volume. You may see um, some kind of tick volume here when um, I'm, I'm trading via which broker um, uh, you may use. Uh, so hopefully you use JFD brokers as a 100% as a CP and DMA broker with no uh, market making license. Um, but you also may trade via another broker. And um, it at the end doesn't really matter which broker you use. Uh, when it comes to volume, especially uh, volume for FX spot, you just have the volume um, of the broker and uh, some of you know that there is um, good reason to use volume in your trading and the problem is that um, in trading um, in FX trading and when trading an OTC product here a mainly traded OTC product you do not have this volume um, when trading spot FX for example and so you need other ways to somehow um, get a feel for the price action and significance of a move through a certain level and everything and so then um, you come to the the sentiment the positioning of uh, of, of retail traders and usually um, you use the re retail trader as an a contraindication this is really interesting since um, uh, the hit rate is quite quite good here, um, but the the problem with retail trading and retail traders and how they behave is usually that they tend to fade the momentum, and um, so this is a very exciting question uh, since uh, the sentiment is not necessarily that we um, uh, um, that that we that we try to be on the other side of the trade, but um, what we try to use is that usually retail traders tend to hold losing positions um, on average much longer than they tend to hold uh, winning positions. And this is the very exciting question here: Why do retail traders this? Why they why do they do what they do? Why do they hold too long long um, hold too long on losing positions and cutting winners to um, um, uh, cutting cutting winners short? um uh, respectively no they are not cutting um um a loser short here but let losers run um since many uh educational pieces out there are emphasizing 
let winners run and cut losers short, right? So, I mean, you, you don't need to to uh, to have a very good book on trading here um, to uh, to know that this is usually the main reason why uh, retail traders lose money. By the way, I have uh, prepared a chart for this to really uh, show you that it's not just um, a simple saying, um, but usually the question arises from, from the audience listening to, to my webinars um, on this topic, but on every other topic I'm holding and bringing in this, this, uh, this, uh, um, 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 bringing up this 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 topic there um so how can you prove that this is really true it is just just have um uh, just be patient a little longer you'll you'll definitely see that this is uh nothing um unusual for retail traders so what we definitely know is that psychology in trading uh, plays a very crucial role and that emotions come into play um, very often. So usually it's anger, frustration, it's fear, it's self-confidence, ego, it's motivation, it's actionism. Um, all those uh, emotions which are uh, common in trading and which are um, somehow interacting with each other are um, uh, the main reason why retail traders in, in fact do what they do. And so based on my personal experience, um, it's uh, fear which is the main topic and the main emotion in trading so the fear of losing money especially but also the main um, uh, driver here um, having uh, or being fearful in terms of um, standing on the wrong side of a trade so as you can already see here it's not just a fear of losing of, of losing money which could result in anger why did i do what i did or uh, in frustration but also in terms of, of, of uh, self-confidence ego um, which could then, by the way, uh, result in motivation to, to somehow change this. Or the motivation of, I need to do something, I need to be successful in trading, that's why, why I, I need to take action here. And this could then result in, uh, um, in the fear of not being accepted anymore. So all in all, it's the, um, not being accepted by the, by the society or by friends or by your parents. You, that, that's what I'm, what I'm talking about here. So um, all in all, fear is the main driver of um, some most of the time why retail traders do what they do. And um, based on that, usually we get to see so-called cognitive biases. So systematically and flawed tendencies uh, when it comes to percipients, remembering, thinking and judging, which impacts your trading in a negative way. So, um, for example, remembering, this is a great topic here. Um, like, if there's kind of election, let's say. Um, and the great thing is that we had some very interesting elections here uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the near past, like uh, the, the election in the U.S. Everyone was surprised to see uh, um, Donald Trump winning the election here. And um, coming out ahead of, um, of 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 Hillary Clinton, the great thing is, if I ask someone, let's say around the same time here, one year ago, so in May June, what do you think um, will be the next president of the United States? Um, what do you think about um, the 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 probabilities here, um, Donald Trump winning and Hillary Clinton winning? I tell you that most of the people would have said Clinton will win this for sure, um, and. I bet that if I ask you right now, so what's the uh, what's the probability? You may have said was well, something like, "Well, I think he'll come out ahead." So Donald Trump will will be the winner here. Yeah, probably thirty percent. Probably the probability is some somewhere around thirty percent. So Clinton has a clear advantage. It's clearly ahead. Um, if I ask you the same question again in November, let's say around the twelfth of November. Um, I'll definitely, I tell you that you would say, well, it was clear that he wins, right? So meaning clear that he has a high probability of winning, not 100%, but probably something around 70 to 80%. The thing is, if you write down, if you wrote down what you think about the chances of Trump winning the election in, let's say, May, June, you may definitely remember uh, the probability you thought um, um, about the chances um, of, of winning, of Trump winning here, um, you may remember those. Uh, this probability too low compared to uh, um, at the moment when you then see Trump winning. This is a great thing since uh, it can easily be adapted to trading. Like um, 
you, you're seeing a Trump, uh, a Trump, no, a trade, a trade uh, coming out ahead, um, or or you say, well, I think that the chances of the market coming down are very high. Let's say, um, so um, that could could have been yesterday, for example. Look at what happened in the S and P. Look at what happened in the Dow Jones. Um, you look at the chart, and you may uh, you you may say, well, the market is right now topping out. So I think the market will definitely come down significantly. Um, and if we look at what happened during the last five months here, um, yesterday was a quite significant day since uh, a one percent drop in the Dow Jones in the S and P. Um, during the last five months just happened once okay so which means uh, and that was by the way I think on the 21st of March so you could easily look this up in a chart but we don't have the time to do this right now but um, this is the thing uh, you you may remember uh, your the, the the confidence in the market coming down um, you definitely there's a good there's a high chance that you remember uh, the chances of the market coming down in a wrong way in terms of probability and um, this is something which which is uh, definitely a topic in terms of trading since this perfectly shows why it's so important to have a trading journal and write down your trades since you tend from those um, cognitive biases and uh, those systematically and flawed tendencies uh, um, and, and remembering uh, remember um, 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 the probability of something wrong um, you, you definitely need to write down your traits since this is a usual tendency um, which lies in the human nature. It's nothing, it's, it's nothing wrong with you, it's just human. And that's the reason why you tend to remember things wrong. This is, by the way, one cognitive bias. There's also another one, um, something called loss aversion, which we'll make a topic a little later on. Um, and which is, by the way, the main reason why retail traders tend to do what they're doing, holding on, losing position, uh, losing positions for too long while cutting the winners too short, and this making it nearly impossible for them to come out ahead um, um, the long, the, in the long run. So here's a chart, which is, by the way, as you can see here, this is just German. Um, I also have this, this chart in, in English, uh, but unfortunately, I didn't find it. So Durchschnittlicher Gewinn means average winner, and uh, Durchschnittlicher Verlust means average loser. And um, you you see it listed here by different um, markets, different in different asset classes. So Euro USD, for example, um, here's gold. Here's the German thirty. It's the DAX, uh, one of the most traded assets, by the way, at JFT Brokers, but also in the whole European uh, landscape. Here, dollar yen, pound yen, pound sterling cable. So it's the Aussie dollar, GBP, JPY, and so on. And um, as you can see here in blue, you have the average winner, and in red, you have the average loser. And as you can see, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter uh, which asset you look this this um, this data up. And this um, I'm here, by the way, from a third party broker. It's not JFD, but it's a it's a it's another broker, big broker with a with a, a huge um, uh, with a huge um, a trading audience, lots, um, a good big pool of, of retail traders considered here. And uh, you can see this that was um, uh, covered from the uh, nearly th um, first quarter. I'm sorry, no, it's the second quarter. I'm sorry, the second quarter of 2014 up to the end of the uh, um, first quarter of 2015. And I have, by the way, the same chart in my, in my uh, um, trading book, um, but for another time frame. And um, when I present this 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 uh, chart, when I presented the chart which I used in my book, but now I'm using this chart since it's uh, more up to date. When I presented this uh, this 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 older chart, which was by the way Q4 2009 up to end of Q3 2010, um, I already and I only um, not only um, I always told the audience, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Um, what you see here, you can easily adapt this to um, um, uh, every time frame. The only thing you have to exchange here is the data which you derive those uh, average winners and losers from. So here are the assets. This is the only thing which changes, but the uh, tendency to hold on losing positions for nearly twice as long um, or having an average loser, which is nearly twice as high as the average winner, this is this is usual. This is quite common. And something which you can, by the way, see here perfectly, nearly in the EURUSD, where you have the average loser of 20 pips, while you have an average 
average, uh, sorry, the average winner of 20 pips, while you have an average loser here of 40 pips. So it's nearly it's nearly a ratio of one to two. So average winner is um, uh, the average loser is nearly twice as high as the average as the average um, 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 loser. I'm sorry, the average loser is twice as high as the average winner this way around. And um, so you can you can easily um, 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 bring in here, let's say, weighted moving average um, on the average winner and the average loser, and you will come out around one to two. So the average loser is twice as high on average as the average uh, um, um, uh, winner and the interesting thing is something uh, this is no coincidence since uh, you could and therefore I will now come up with uh, a suggestion on a book I highly recommend this uh, it's uh, something you have to read probably the best book on trading um, and now the great thing is the great thing is it's no book on trading at all so it's thinking fast and thinking slow from uh, Daniel Kahneman uh, you have to read this it's definitely one of the best books on trading out there the great thing is it's uh, it's it's um, translated in several languages also in English sure in English but also in German for example uh, I read this book several times and um, it will bring you all those thoughts um, in a very detailed way here um, all the thoughts I present to you today um, some some of the charts I, I will use a little later on in this webinar are derived from from this uh, uh, from this book here and um, as you can see here it has 500 and 500 plus pages so you have definitely a lot of, of, of input here um, which you can easily adapt then to your trading if you really get the message of this and one of the messages here is the message on loss aversion uh, loss aversion and the great thing about this is that you find out that here this loss aversion um, can be can be seen here this 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 uh, this um, um, proof here uh, based on on other um, ideas they they brought up to test their their theories here uh, you can see this in these in this chart already so the usual tendency of a human being and it doesn't matter if it's a trader or not um, that the that you need or that you that will feel the same kind of joy um, here when you're winning uh, that that you need to have a winner twice as high as a loser to have the same uh, joy out of a winner than you have the the pain out of a loser. So usually you say for each each um, 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 euro uh, you're you're making, you just need to lose uh, 50, 50 cent. That's that's nearly the message which is which is delivered here from a scientific um, uh, um, approach and you can see this here too since uh, this is this is the if you if you put this the other way around so uh, usually here those traders they are they are they are having uh, double as much pain uh, in those uh, um, um, occasions when they're losing as they have once they are winning and you can easily um, 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 find this in your trading too I bet that usually um, you definitely not just fear um, uh, losing money, but you also have much more pain connected when it comes to trading than you usually have a joyful feeling, right? And this is something which is uh, which is perfectly shown here in this chart. Um, and you probably may not have heard about this yet, but it's definitely there. So it's no coincidence that you see the chart here in this uh, in this um, um, way. Where, where you have the average loser being nearly twice as high as the average winner so um, let's come to the next to the next uh, to the next thing the, the the problem we have is that usually I could easily stop the presentation right here no, not at this um, um, slide but I could easily easily stop um, the presentation here since uh, I've definitely I nearly delivered the message I just want to deliver so that you that you uh, that there is a, a usual or um, a human tendency to um, see uh, or to to have such kind of let's call it loss aversion here and um, based on on the fear of, of facing a, a loser you usually tend 
from a natural perspective to usually hold on losing positions based on this loss aversion for too long while grabbing the winners way too fast. The problem is that this is pure theory and some might say, well, okay, great, thanks for the info, um, but what can I do in trading with this? Or respectively, um, how, can I, how can I test this myself? And uh, therefore, I prepared this game. I usually play this game with, with audiences um, here in, in Germany, especially. And I, I usually play this game with different people there. So since uh, you usually have some um, um, several audiences in different um, 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 places. Um, and so what I do is I, I usually ask them uh, to, to give an answer on those two independent games. So game one and game two and to just choose between those two options. And I, but by the way, we'll do the same. So what I, what I um, would, would um, tell you to do now, right now is um, take at least a screenshot here if you do not want to, to, participate, to participate in this game or uh, you participate now, but nevertheless take a screenshot to get the message of what I will just present to you a little later on. So we have two games, they're independent from each other. We have game one, you have the option A that you get right here, 900 euro from me, or um, the second is you have a 90% chance of getting 1,000, but a 10% chance of not getting anything at all. So, and the question is which option you choose. So this is game one. So now um, just um, take, take, a, take a, a, a small piece of paper or something, write down A or B, which option you choose. Um, afterwards, play the second game. It's independent. Once again, it's independent from each other. Second game, you choose between two options again. Now it's on losing. Option A is you lose right here 900 euros. You have to give it to me to give it to me. And option B is you have a 90% of chance of losing 1,000 euros, but a 10 chance, 10 percent chance of losing nothing at all. And also write down A or B. So which option do you choose? So um, I have a I have a chat box here. So probably if um, I think you um, uh, here in this case, uh, Rich is asking, are these uh, free to listen or do you have to be a member? I think you can listen now. Um, usually you, you can easily listen to, to, the, to the webinar. Um, and I think they are for free. So I haven't heard something different. But um, what's more interesting here is um, if, if someone's listening right now, and I think there are people listening right now, would you please write down um, which option you choose? So um, just say um, one, um, one and then A or B, and then two A or B. I'd really like to see what happens here. The great thing here is that, and this is, by the way, no joke, um, the great thing here is on this game, it doesn't matter where I play the game, I usually get always the same ratio here. So I have a clear idea. And by the way, this ratio is all also confirmed in the book Thinking Fast and Slow. And this is really great to see since it perfectly shows that uh, the book has more to do with trading and more in common with trading than you might think on uh, first glance here. So um, if, you're, if you're right now here, then uh, just I, I'd really, um, I really really appreciate it if you, if you write down um, um, your, your answers here in the, in the chat box. Um, and uh, I'll give it, let's say, I'll give it. I'll give it something like the the next slide. Okay. So I wait and with with your answers here for the next slide. Um, and what I will what I will uh, um, do now. Um, the problem is I, I did this game when I first did this game. Played this game with the audience. The problem was it usually is really difficult to to build a bridge towards trading. But I didn't um um um, um look at it this way. So to me, it's very obvious why I'm playing this game. Uh, and for me, it's it's very easy. So I, I see the 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 uh, why it has something to do with trading. While um, after a presentation, I think it was back in in Munich, um, someone came to me, and I'm not sure was it 2013, was it 2014? I don't know. 15? I don't know. Probably was 14. Um, there came uh, there was a there was a participant and one of my 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 speeches there. He came to me, and he said, "Well, it was really great. It was really great to play this game." Um, he, also, after he he's seen the uh, the result here. But um, the problem is, I don't think that most of the people got the message. So I was located right in between two people 
And they were both shaking their heads saying, okay, great game, but um, I don't get the point. And um, he said, well, probably you have to bring up a real trading related example to understand this. So I'm, by the way, I'm just seeing that, that no one's answering the question, which is, uh, which is, which is, uh, which is a pity, but okay. Let, let me, let me then bring you the answer here first. So game one usually have a ratio of 60 to 70% saying I take option A and you have something between 30 to 40% um, choosing option B. And in game two, um, the ratio is usually 10% uh, taking option A while nearly 90%, sometimes it's probably 20 here, but it's something between 10 to 20 option A and uh, um, 80 to 90% they are choosing option B. So this is usually what you get here. So 60, 40, 70, 30 here, game one. Um, and um, 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 towards option A to B. And here it's uh, nearly 10, 20 to uh, 80, 90% here, option A to option B. Okay, so, and now the great thing about this is, um, have a close look, have a close look what's what's happening here. I'll give you the training related example shortly after this. Um, so what's the only difference in those two games? What's the only difference you have here? It's It's very obvious. So in game one, you're winning. In game two, you're losing. So all you uh, all we want to do right now is, and all we want to find out is, how do you behave in terms of winning and how do you behave in terms of losing? And this is the great thing about this. So um, I, I, you can easily play this with with different numbers so um i when i when i was managing the um a team the german uh, team here of, of daily effects um for for fxcm back then so you may remember that daily effects was the research arm of fxcm um and um, um, um daily effects was sold then for 40 million to ig markets and uh so um the German, Austrian, and Switzer, uh, Swiss part here made quite a big chunk out of this um, um, part um, of, of the LEFX here, uh, of this, of this, of this research arm, and I was managing this, uh, so I was the head of research for DLFX German, Austria, and, and Switzerland, and I was managing a, um, a small team, and um, this is a nice anecdote here. Since I played this game with them, I just wanted to figure out um, how is my play, how is my team doing here, how how are they prepared for this kind, but I I did. Didn't play it with uh, 900 and, and, and 1,000 euros. So 900 and 1,000 euros for someone who does not have the 100, uh, the, the 1,000 euros, it probably matters. But it's not usually it's it's not game changing. But I played it with a game changing approach. I, I or a life changing, not game changing, but life changing approach. I said, well, what do you choose? You're choosing uh, 1 million right here, or you're going for a coin flip for 100 million? So. And the great thing is that they looked at me and said, 1 million. I said, well, you know what? You just uh, did what nearly 80, 90%, 99% of the people are doing. And they said, well, I think we know what you want to play with us, but you have to remember that 1 million is life-changing. And they are definitely right. So I will tell you this. I will show you this in a, in a, in a small picture a little later, um, but they are right. So usually, I mean, going for a coin flip here um, and, and saying, okay, if it's 50-50, uh, so you have 100 million or you're getting nothing at all. The problem with this is, I mean, having 100 million compared to 1 million, I mean, this is definitely life, 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 life changing. But um, on the other hand, 1 million will change your life too. Um, and and this, is, this is something you have to consider here. So, um, and I, I changed the game. So from a pure mathematical standpoint, um, 1 million right here or 50 mil, uh, 100 million uh, in 50% of the cases, there's a big difference to it since the expected value here for 1 million is 1 million while the expected value on the second game is uh, 50 million. So from a mathematical standpoint, you definitely should choose the coin flip for 100 million. Nevertheless, um, if you want to really find out uh, the psychology um, here or, or how you tend to, to behave, in terms of winning and also in terms of losing and get a get a sense of of what this chart is showing us you should work with numbers which are not um life changing but which are um which which are which are playing with your with your attitude in terms of winners and losers and um so from an expected value standpoint it's definitely no difference since in the first um, um option the expected value is 900 euros 
um, while in the second option, it's 900 euros too. So you have a 90% chance, 0 0.9 multiplied with 1,000, it's 900, while having a 10% chance of not losing anything at all. So minus zero, it's also 900 euros from expected value standpoint. And in the second um, um, game, it's the same. So it's minus 900 and minus 900, but it's, um, well, because you're losing, but all in all, the expected value is the same and the numbers are not game changing. And um, now, now look at this game from, from this perspective of first game is a game about winning. The second game is a game of losing. So you, you will find out that in nearly 70% of the cases, um, you choose option one or option A. Um, so you're taking, you're grabbing um, the winner right here since you say, well, I just have it safe then, okay? So I'm not risking it of losing it anymore. While option B is kind of gambling when you say, okay, I'm going for, let's say, the breakout on the upside, if you put it in terms of trading. So I'm gambling. Sometimes the market won't break, but all in all, there's still 100 euro um, um, gain, more money you can make out of going for the break then. Um, while in the second one, you in option A, you're saying, okay, I take the loss right here. I just take it, okay? But this is just in 10, 20% of the cases. Um, uh, in 80, 90% of the cases, people choose option B. So they tend to say, okay, well, it doesn't matter if I'm losing 900 or if I'm losing 1000, but in the second, in option B, the second uh, choice, well, I can have, uh, if, I'm, if I'm getting lucky, if I'm lucky, well, it's, I'm just losing, in 10% of the case, I'm losing nothing at all. And this is the big difference here in those two games. Now let's adapt this to this, to this chart. You grab the winner, and that's why you have on average a smaller gain while you're, let's say, more aggressive, or well, you're you're fine of losing another, let's say, twenty pips or something on average. It doesn't matter since you already say, well, I lost so much on this trade. It doesn't matter, which makes the average loser bigger than the average winner. And this is what breaks the neck of most retail traders. So now let's come back here from this from this game, which, as you can see, it's you can easily adapt this to trading, but you're not necessarily building this bridge. So that's why I um, I bring up this, this trading related example here. So the problem is it's also a German chart, um, but nevertheless, you'll definitely get what I'm talking about. So um, it's a very easy approach. It's an uh, it's, um, uptrend here and you're saying, okay, I'm going, I'm going along once the market breaks to new highs here. This is where this purple um, cycle comes into play. And um, so you're, you're going along here and then you don't really enjoy the winning um, of this trade or the, 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 the trade developing in your direction. Why? Well, since you expect it to happen. Probably it's self-confidence playing a role here, whatever. So you usually say, okay, well, I went long. We have an upside, um, upward structure. Well, no question about this. It's, it's a great trade since I did everything right, but you just don't feel joy out of it. You don't, you don't feel happy to see this. Um, I mean, here again, the the the, the trading the the, the um, uh, position size comes into play. The moment you are having a position size which is I don't know making you uh, probably one month of work your monthly salary in ten minutes since the position size is big enough. Thanks to I don't know you just um, you're you're trading a two hundred fifty thousand euro account since your grandma just said, well, take the money, my son, uh, and have some fun with it. Um, uh, well, then you probably you probably feel happy about this and and go for the winner here already, while not be cap being capable of of letting the winner run. But all in all, if you if you do not consider the money um, um, uh, component here, usually you do not feel joy when this happens. But do you remember the times when the market then finally starts? To to, uh, to 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 pull back from the from from those gains and how, how it feels if you're let's say I had 1,000 euros and then the market starts to reverse and you know, just had 800 euros uh, ooh, hmm, doesn't feel good right and then you're you're giving away half of those 1,000 so you're only um, had 500 bucks 
so you're still ahead just to to make sure that we that we, that you get the point so i'm not talking about um i'm not talking about being behind in this trade but you're still ahead 500 euros it 500 is definitely more than than uh those those uh, uh zero you had once you you started the trade but it's definitely less than 1000 you were ahead here and as we already know giving back half of this winner of this winning trade here let's say you're just ahead 500 and you were already ahead 1000 usually makes you feel like you lost everything the moment you lost everything of those 1000 uh, the moment the market keeps on dropping here probably just ahead 300 euros but it's usual it's 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 natural it's natural that the market um, 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 gives back in a kind of retracement most of the winnings here and then starting going up from here again uh, this 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 happens all the time so if you do not have this you do not have a structure of higher highs and higher lows or um, reverse it and see a structure of falling highs and falling lows so it's natural and has to happen since the market needs this structure to have an upside structure in this case or in downside structure, it depends um so and and what you have here then is a uh, is a big feel feeling of, of of pain and and giving it back most of it and then you can't stand the pain any longer and you just say okay i i take this out at least i somehow make 200 euros on this trade even though it feels like a loss since you were already ahead uh, 1000 and giving away 800 of those makes it feel like you gave away 1600 which means you're somehow closing the trade at a loss you don't feel joy but you feel pain and um so this is the great thing since since you still made 200 euros on the trade but now remember this happening here in the loss uh, um, area but all in all this is how a trading related example works in this case so when the market pushes here you usually take out the winner since the position size is too high or you're going for a small winner since you can't see uh, um, um, you, you just don't want to to have the moment when you're somehow losing um, um, some of the gains in case of the first game it is well you ha you have the chance to get right here 900 euros but here you have probably a chance of getting 1000 if you if you take the pain a little longer even though there's a 10 percent chance that you're getting nothing at all how does it feel in this case to to have nothing at all it it's horrible since you could have had 900 euros safe okay um, now the other side of the coin is is the is the losing option. So you could easily pull the trigger and say, okay, well, I take out the loss here. I have my my trade, my stop loss of the of the trade here somewhere. I don't know in this region, taking the loss fine. Um, or and this is something many traders do. They're working with kind of let's call it a shadow stop. So it's a stop which you never hit. It's like you try to catch your own shadow. You don't. You cannot catch your shadow. It's just impossible. And this is the same thing for the stop. So you just take the stop um, um, here on on the downside. You just take it out, and you probably say, "Okay, let's put it here. Let's put it here." Wherever the market, and and you say, "Well, once or rather sooner than later, the market will turn around." And this is what makes then the bigger, the big losing trade on average, um, since as long as you just have a floating loss but not uh, a real, realized loss, um, it's no loss. It's just just a loss you can see in the book and you get lucky nine out of ten times you get lucky since the market will turn around it will make a small profit you book a small profit and um, everything will be fine but the tenth time the market won't turn around and you will hit you will be hit really hard you will you lose most of the money and at the end well you lose your trading account since you're trading with a negative expected value and this is what in this case behavioral finance is about so it's all about the so-called um the so-called loss aversion and this this chart here is um from uh, or is based on Kahneman's best-selling book thinking fast thinking slow which I highly recommend already did and uh, where I say well read this book it's a great it's a great read and one probably of the best trading books you will find out there even though it has nothing to do with trading so there's one one um one one section here um which is on trading um, but all in all, it's not really a trading book. But nevertheless, if you read between the lines, if you adapt this, what you read in the book to your trading, you will definitely uh, come out ahead 10, 20, 30 times better than you, uh, than you were or you behaved as a trader before you started reading the book. So it's better than anything you might read on technical analysis, fundamental analysis, whatever. 
Um, and and you, I, as I already said, I highly recommend it. So here, it's um, it's four cases. It's the high probability, the sure bet thing, and the case of winning. So you have a ninety percent chance of winning uh, ten grand. Um, so the question is, do you go for a break of a crucial level to get another ten grand? As already said, the chance of, of a break happening is 95%. Most of the people usually tend to say, I'll, I'll go for 10,000. If you don't believe this, well, look at this chart. It shows that this is the usual behavior of people. And this is the main reason why 90% of the people lose 90% of their money in 90 days. So this is, this is a rule of thumb of, 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 of brokers. And um, I worked with a broker for over five, ten, uh, five years, six years, um, and I, I heard plenty of people um, um, on the phone, and not 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 talking to me, but talking talking to to my to my colleagues back then. So I was responsible for doing the research, doing the educational stuff. Um, if I had big clients back then, um, it doesn't it doesn't matter the accounts, it doesn't matter. It's always the same. They have always the same fears. They have always. Uh, the same uh, rules why they're taking uh, why they're taking winners too fast, letting losers run. It's based on loss aversion. It's based on losing hurts, and uh, they don't feel um, um, the joy, the big joy, when there is a big winner happening, or where they are not, they're not, they are not having this this feeling often enough. Let's say, um, so. So it's a high probability, sure, bad thing. So this is the case of winning. You have another thing where I say, well, boys will be boys, let's say. Uh, you have a 5% of, of chance of, of winning 10 grand. And it's similar to playing lottery, for example. Uh, taking one shot, let's say. Okay. And where you where you have a clearly defined loss and where you say, okay, let's go for it. It's, um, yeah, it's it's like, it's like, okay, playing lotto. Let's say um, I'm a winner here. I come out ahead. Yeah, it will probably be life changing, and sometimes it makes sense to play those games. You shouldn't play those games too often, since um, since you always have to pay a price for this. But sometimes it makes sense, especially by the way for men. So I, I consider it from a perspective of a man, since I am um, a man. But um, and and some some of 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 the women might might look at this net right now and think, well, really, well, that's the way. That's the way men are, and 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 that's that's the thing. So, boys will be boys. It, it won't change. And uh, sometimes you go for for those small bets, gambling a little, and thinking, okay, probably I come out ahead. I think this is the thing where you say, I take the risky bet, and it even though I have a small probability of winning, it's still okay since the payoff of such trades is usually so great that it's justified to take such a bet. And from an asymmetrical risk perspective, so if you ever looked at trading options, for example, it definitely makes sense to, to, to take those chances. And usually I do, by the way, too. Um, nevertheless, it, you shouldn't go for this too often um, since uh, it could cost you some significant amount of money in the long run if you're playing those games too often. So now you have the high probability in the case of losing. So if you have a 5% chance of losing 10 grand, um, you feel the loss even though it's highly unlikely. So it's the other way around. So 95% okay, of the cases, uh, you have a chance of winning 10 grand. So the question is, do you go for the break to another for another uh, 10 grand? If the, this, the, this break is so highly likely in this case here, it's the other way around. And that's the reason why you why you're not going for the break, but take the small winner. So you, you feel the loss and you feel the pain you might suffer from taking such a loss here or not not taking the winner. And uh, this results in fast profit taking, especially if trading too big in this case. So this is nearly the same. Uh, um, it's the same coin. It's just the other way uh, around. And it's yeah. In this case, it's it's like you say. Well, I don't go for this um, for this chance of a break and making another ten grand here, um, since or making the ten grand, but take take the small winner. 
Um, and it's similar, as already said here, um, it's similar to game one and taking option A in this case. So I'm, I'm saying, okay, I go for the safe 900 euros instead of um, um, thinking about the, the, the outcome here, the, the high probability that I will come out ahead of this trade. So the second one, and this is, by the way, this is, this is the catastrophe. This is like you shouldn't go for this. So in this case here, um, you have the, the, the big winners. Here in this case, you have the small losers. Um, or no, I'm sorry. Here and here, you have the small losers, and here, well, you have the somehow mm, small winners. Let's say, okay. Um, take out this, and you already have a good chance of being profitable in your trading. This is like taking uh, having a 95 percent chance of losing 10 grand, but you keep the bet on since uh you say well i've lost so much money already uh it doesn't matter anymore um let's just hope that things turn around for me this is like game two option b why the result here as you may remember the numbers i was presenting to you i said well this is 10 percent probably 20 percent of the cases here and 10 to 8 um, i'm sorry I'm, I'm, I'm 80 to 90 percent here of the people and they they have this tendency of saying well i lost already so much money it doesn't doesn't matter anymore so i'll just take this stuff out let's hope that the market turns around if it doesn't well i lost so much money already it doesn't matter anymore and this is exactly the case i think from a pure behavioral economics perspective why most of the traders will fail in the long run since um, they get too emotional and they have they have this tendency of, 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 of just starting to hope that things will turn around. And usually this is the main reason why most of the people then will will definitely lose in trading in the long run and 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 crush crush their account. So now the thing is the question comes into play or come here, I mean all this is something you might have somewhere heard already. But the question is, how do you profit? How can you profit from, from this knowledge in your trading? So, for example, you have a winning streak and you gain self-confidence here and you feel invulnerable. So it's, it's just like you may have had this. Um, the moment when you think you're king of the world, well, just stop trading since it will be the day the last time the sun will shine for you <laughs> since uh, you're trading well after this after you have this feeling you will suffer enormous pain enormous losses this is the usual way it is so uh since this is the the moment when you're trading your biggest and when your self-confidence is at the highest point you usually will face a massive massive loss based on a trade which won't work out well, um, this may sound ridiculous to someone who is trading a pure systematic approach, like let's say, um, since he says, well, I have a clear stop and it's defined, but this is exactly the thing. Most of the people out there do not have a trading system. On top of that, they do not even have a trading system which is working. They think they have one and this is making them suffer and losing money. And um, so this is one, one moment, especially if you're a discretionary trader now, um, you, you have to find ways of, of how to cope with the situation. And not just when you're losing, but also obviously when you're winning, since uh, it's highly, um, you, you should work. You should work with something which we call um, um, induction of, of rational uh, thinking. So um, what you will do then is you find actively reasons why the next trade could fail. So you, you really um, don't say, well, I'm the greatest, but um, I'm, I'm still um, someone who could who could uh, could be on the wrong side of a trade. So what could potentially go wrong if I take on this trade right now? It's um, something called um, pre-mortem analysis. Also, by the way, presented in the book, thinking fast, thinking slow. Um, and um, what I what I do is I bet that if you do this accurately, you will never trade without a stop anymore. So something like this won't happen to you. Uh, shouldn't happen to you here that you that you just say well i lost so much money but what you do is you say okay what amount of money am i willing to trade um, risk on this trade let's say you're trading 100,000 account there so you're risking one percent um as you're saying okay i'm risking 1000 euros so i'm planning to go long here um wherever so this is the risk i have since i plan to put, put, um, um, put my stop here and then you just say okay i have let's say 20 25 points risk 
something like that. You want to risk 1,000 euros, so it's 1,000. You divide it by 25, you have uh, 40 contracts you're trading or 40 euros per pip or whatever, 40 USD per pip. Um, and uh, if you're working like this, so at least you won't let losers run. So you, you make sure that those um, losing trades don't uh, run out of control here. So the next thing, if you grasp, grasp the concept of expected value, you definitely understand that trading based on cognitive biases will result in bad results in the long term and increasing your chances of going broke. So what do I mean by this? Um, I'm not sure, but probably some of you may have already heard about the expected, form, uh, expected value formula. Some of you probably haven't. So expected value is defined as the average winner you multiply it with, I'm sorry. I know it's okay, average winner, you multiply it with the hit rate and then you subtract the average loser multiplied with the loss rate. So, and um, what you can see here is there are things you can, you can uh, influence in your trading and there are things you, things you, you just can't. Mm. So let's go with those things you can't influence here. Well, probably some might influence this. Uh, so based on a, on a good feeling on the market, and if you're trading for a long period of time, um, you probably may be, may be able to reduce your uh, losing rate while increasing your hit rate since you say, well, I've seen this spot several times before. We shouldn't take the long trade. Even though we have the signal here, we shouldn't go for this trade since the probability of this trade ending a uh, loser here is, is um, um, very high. Even if you say, okay, I have the signal here. I have to take the trade. You might say, well, I definitely reduce the position size on this trade significantly to make sure that if I face a losing trade, that the loser is very small. And uh, well, since you say, um, even if I have a winner here, uh, this 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 winner is uh, yeah purely coincident. I, I wouldn't say that, but nevertheless, it's uh, still it shouldn't be the main reason why you're profitable in your trading. Let's put it that way. So you just can't influence whether the market goes up or down. Even um, an expert trader with a load of, 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 uh, of experience um, won't be capable of saying, of telling whether a market goes up or down. He just can't. And the same thing with the loss trade. So um, uh, it's, it's like the hit rate and the loss rate are um, the opposite, um, on the opposite, uh, on the opposite side, on the, on the, on the, what's the word for this? It's the same metal, but it's the opposite side of, of, of the metal. And, um, so you just can't influence the hit rate and the loss rate. While you can influence the average winner and the average loser, how do you do this? Well, you could, for example, find out what's my trading approach. Let's say you're a trend follower and have an exit system, which makes sure that you let your, run, uh, your, your winners run. On the other hand, you can make sure that the average loser is uh, not too big how well set a stop loss at the beginning of the trade. So say, well, I'm willing to 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 risk one thousand euros on this trade. You take up the trade once you hit this moment, and when, once you once you hit those one thousand euros, um, usually it shouldn't be the money amount which which uh, which is um, important here. But you usually should say, well, um, if I'm a trend follower, if I'm trading pro cyclical, I should take out the trade at the, in a moment where the market turns around and the trend ends. Uh, so this is usually where, where you should take out the trade, not saying, well, I'm risking 1,000 euros here since this most, most of the time results in people trading way too big here and taking out the position once the trend is still intact. But I think you get the point. So what you try to do here is, it, based on the formula for the expected value, you try to influence the winners and the losers. You don't try to influence the hit rate. So you probably one day might start to to adapt and uh, might 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 say, okay, let's um, let's somehow try to uh, um, um, to manipulate the hit rate here, trying to to get a better timing on the market and everything. But if you start trading, uh, you definitely and also if you're trading uh, for for a while and and you're also already an advanced trader, you should definitely watch to somehow. 
um, influence the average winner and average loser first, and then go for the optimization in terms of the hit and the loss rate here. So, which means, and now come back to this one here, if you grasp the concept of expected value, you understand that trading based on a cognitive bias will result in bad results in the long term, increasing your chances of going broke, meaning that, for example, um, you have a problem here in the case where you say, well, um, a hit rate, if I try to influ influence it, well, I probably remember wrong what happened in the past and, and how likely I, I thought that the market will go up or down. Um, same thing on average loser or average winner. Depends on um, where you say, well, if I'm too fast in my profit taking and if I'm uh, based on a loss aversion here, um, Taking taking out the stop and let losers run. By the way, it, it's not um, um, it's, it's it's funny. You might say, well, if if I have a lot of loss aversion, how can I let losers run? Again, if it's a floating loss, it's not a realized loss. Meaning, as long as you as you do not um, realize the 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 loss and and take out the position, you do not have a loss. Okay, that's the psychology behind this. That's why you usually let losers run. And um, so what you should do, the solution for, for this, to make long things short, so formulate a trading plan and a clear idea of what you plan to trade. So then test it. And if it works and it's a robust approach, which means um, um, you, you've tested it in several market environments and uh, it brought even there in a difficult market environment. Let's say you have a trend following approach and you test it in a range market. Well, you will get definitely not a positive or great result, but even if it works well in this difficult market environment for the approach, once again, a trend following system works well in a trend following environment or in a trending environment and not in a range market. If it works well in a range market too, and it's not producing catastrophic, uh, catastrophic um, results here, probably it's a robust approach. Also, a robust means you shouldn't um, 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 work with, with like, I don't know, let's say you have a moving average approach and you're working with a, with a moving average of 20 and 50. So it usually should also work with a, with a moving average of 23 and 54. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about in terms of, 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 of robustness here. And um, so the, the short version of this is you have a positive expected value and a risk of ruin of zero. Well, if you have this, go with the approach. Even though you will face loss, um, you will face losses and losing trades. But nevertheless, go with this. And um, another thing is, stop fighting, writing your strategy and your trades down. So what I mean with this is the following: most people do this, so they do not have a trading journal, for example, um, and and write down their strategy, respectively their trades. Most people do this to to avoid a result showing that they're prompt probably something doing wrong and um it's it's kind of self-defense and then it's like you want to defend yourself and, and and avoid that something is showing you okay you're doing something horribly wrong so you don't want to be uh in the position that someone can, can so someone this is something you put in quotation marks so someone in this case is the trading journal it's it's what you wrote down will tell you hey this does not work and so to avoid this feedback you just don't do it and um, now the the idea behind this thought is some make it something positive so uh, making mistakes for example and knowing them gives you a chance to change something in your trading and then get a positive result in the long run all in all if we combine this it all has something to do of how you get rid of those cognitive biases in your trading that you start somehow to have a clear idea of what you're doing you start to induce rationality let's say um saying okay losers they are the price for the next chance in my trading okay so you have to pay a price the moment you do not realize a loss and the loss starts to get bigger and bigger well the price for this loss is probably too big and killing your chances of keep on trading so once you're once you're killing uh your your trading account by a bit too big to position size well you don't have to you don't have any more money to trade with in the future remember that when you when you're building a position and and if you combine all this you will find out that um you can definitely um find ways how to cope with your, those cognitive biases and it's definitely worth it to do it um but don't fight them it's not that you fight them, but that you start to deal with them. So it's completely usual that you're 
tending to to take uh, winners too fast and let losers run if you have a trading approach a strategy and you clearly know that it works if you let the winner run while cutting the loser short and you have a you have a you, you, you have it written down well then it makes things much easier and you know that from a per, from a human perspective you tend you usually want to take the winner now and you don't want to realize the loss even though um, you induce rationality and then you say okay well I do it that way since I know it will work and it makes me money in the long run since it has a positive expected value yeah and so that's it on the on the topic behavioral um, finance here um, I am uh, I, I hope that you enjoyed um, um, listening to what I had to say I wish you uh, a nice evening and uh, always watch your stops talk to you again then tomorrow in the jfd live uh, um, stream in the youtube channel here with the morning meeting at 9 30 a.m gmt i look forward to it we'll have a look at the markets as usual and um yeah so have a nice evening see you and bye-bye